All right. So, um, yeah, so last class we were seeing more from uh, plugins. Uh, we saw some examples of plugins, and especially we were seeing the structure of plugins. So moving forward, uh, there are a couple of other uh, topics which we need to cover. So before going into it, uh, there was one specific um, thing which I said I'll tell you later. So if you remember uh, when we had, um, okay, so when we created, so I was telling something about snapshots here, right? So whenever we're giving a version ID, we used to give it as 1.0 snapshot. This was the default name which we always used. So if a question comes maybe uh, from interview point of view or from understanding why do you need that, the question will ask uh, in a different way they'll ask you. So either it could be what is snapshot or what is the need of snapshot or when you are working, if the question comes to you, why do we need a snapshot? So the very first thing what you need to understand is the version ID, whatever you create here will be the version of the jar file which you're releasing to the customer right so if you remember so where was i sorry okay so here so if you had seen after compiling this uh we used to get a, okay, quickly, let me try it. So you get a jar file with the same name version, right? So what will happen is, whenever you are releasing something to the customer, it will always be based on a version number. So a version number comes into the picture only when we are releasing something. So unless and until you're not releasing, you might be using it for uh, testing purpose, right? Until then, you will be using some other name or you don't even go with the concept of version string. I'll, I'll go inside the complete uh, topics when we are uh, seeing the release management. So, but uh, you just remember this much, you might be releasing anything that doesn't matter uh, you are into the build management or whatever it is. You will create a version number only when you are releasing it to a customer. So what does it uh, implies? It is says that that whatever three digits number that you're using refers to a major, minor and a patch number. So it is depending on what you're trying to give it to a customer to identify it and to trace back any point of time you use that version. So now what will happen if you are using a version number for every build, then what will happen every time you do a build, you have to keep on changing the version number. That is logically not possible. And second thing, what will happen if you take as a whole product, say that you have a, a product one, which is dependent on product two. Now, every time when you are doing a build, if you try to build a jar with some specific version number, what will happen? How will the project to get the project one's jar file? Okay, my question is in the reverse way. If project two depends on project one dot jar, right? Now from where will it pick it up? From project one. Mm, okay, typically from Maven's architecture. Where will it pick it up? From the local repository. Exactly. Software. So now, so what will be the file name that it is going to represent? It is going to check for project one dot jar with some version number, just like this. Right. Now, every time if you keep changing the build, so if the file name also changes, now whatever the project two dot jar is taking will not be the latest. Right, because when you are uh, putting a dependency, you have to say some specific name, which jar you have to pick up. So in that case, every time if you keep changing the release of project one, so like you do project one build, you will create one name. 
you create a project two second build then sorry the project once once again if you build you will be giving one more jar name so like this every time you rebuild project one there will be new new jar file names so correspondingly what you have to do whoever is owning the project 2 they have to ensure that okay project 1 uh, they have updated and they have to see what is the name of the file they've updated and then they have to come and uh, do some modification in their pom.xml corresponding to that so if they keep doing it it will not be feasible because you might think just as one file but think about uh, bigger dependencies so many projects uses the same thing so for that logic what we do is we go with the standard called snapshot so as the name indicates snapshot always represents a particular scenario so whenever you have such a kind of dependencies it is always better to use a common name so that no matter how many times you rebuild project one project two will be referring to the same file that is whatever the name iphon 1.0 snapshot and that is the standard we follow and not only that it also ensures that that file is a development copy so only when in the final stage when you are trying to do a release you rerun the same thing by changing the version here so you just simply go to the version you change the number whatever you want and then rerun so what will that happen is it will create a new file only when we are doing a release but until then it will be recreating the same name so for that standard we follow a naming convention that is what we call it a snapshot is it clear so it indicates in simple snapshot indicates a development copy of your project and not the something which you can release so if you see uh, jar file or a var file with the name that one dot iphone snapshot then it means that it is under development and you're not going to release wherever you see a version number instead of snapshot that means then that is the file which you have given to the customer or you are going to give to the customer I'm getting it yes kumar are you clear Yeah, so mean to say that um, I have uh, too many jars, you know, the final copy we are trying to send it to the, uh, the which one is the valid one we are, uh, that which one we are sending to the customer, that is, uh, that is the final snapshot, right? Yeah, so you don't call it as final snapshot, you can change by giving okay. it an actual version number. Okay, okay. I, I mean, it's but a the, standard, the, what? The version which we compiled, right? That is the that is the uh, the final version. What we are talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So why did uh, I talk about all those dependencies? We'll see it now. So so far whatever we saw was still uh, a little basic thing, or you could consider that yeah, module was there. Uh, plugins was there that and all is fine now consider uh, you're working on a real project so there could be like hundreds of files right okay and then do you think you will be putting all the hundred files in this one directory everything all the hundred files will be here possibly it can be there but what will happen is it's always a good idea to segregate it based on the functionality now when you want to segregate in the base of functionality you cannot put one directory here all the group of files one more directory because maven doesn't understand anything further it has to be present all the files should be present in this directory in case if it is not present it doesn't follow because it has to follow this directory structure so in that case what you'll do is always whenever someone is writing a project then they always make sure that the structure is in such a way that all the related files to a particular functionality will be in one bigger directory which means you separate the folders with respect to the components or simply we call it as modules so for each module or each component based on its functionality you will be putting one one directory now since we are using maven and we have to follow a directory structure right logically what is the structure we need to follow 
first thing we need to do is we need to where was that okay so first thing is we need to have a directory in which you should have a src then following all the directory structure then we should have a corresponding pom.xml which understands this so in the same case when we have multiple modules inside the same project what we can simply do is rather than putting everything into one folder we can simply create multiple folders or multiple directories which represent a particular component so what you can do is instead of putting everything under here you create one folder here okay and you call it as module 1 okay now inside module 1 what you should be having you should be having the same directory structure so we can put a files like this so that now if you see demo is a parent product wherein inside that module 1 is a single component so now you have the freedom in two ways that is if you want you can directly come inside module 1 and you can work on that if not you can go back to the demo as a product we can work on that also i'll show you that how we can do it so now assume that you have like this okay so now if you see we have two modules both of them are present inside demo as the product wherein individually mod one is a product by itself so which means it is a mini project by itself why we call it as mini project or why do I call it as a project by itself because it has its own directory structure which Maven understands and it has a corresponding pom.xml so now what we can do is in order to do the build for this we will put all the files related to this component inside this particular directory and we will create one pom.xml related to that okay now what is that we have to do we have to simply do some modifications and what modifications we have to do if you see i have created a new pom.xml logically i have copy pasted but it acts as a new file so simply we have to do some modifications why because first of all where it is now it is in module one right so we just go inside and do some small modifications so now if you see what is the artifact id here it is module one so the name of the project is also mod one okay that's it I'm, I'm not doing anything else maybe if you want we can keep the build the same concept will hold good to avoid confusion i'm not going with any plugin okay i'm just using the default profile so that whatever i want to do we can do so similarly if you have any plugins related to this particular component you can put everything or define everything here okay so now if if you go to mod one and now if i say maven package what is it going to do it is going to compile only the module one project why because module one is again a sub project of demo one and it has its own directory structure and it also has its own pom.xml corresponding to it So if you go now inside that, so you see it has created a mod one where iPhone one dot zero snapshot is the standard name that it is appending. Similarly, we will go inside mod two and we created the same structure, right? Copy pasting. We'll also modify here. So I'll say mod two, and here also just for reference, I'll say mod two. And if you want, we can keep it still here. It doesn't matter. Just to avoid confusion, I'll remove this. Okay, now I've done this much. So now what let's do is, now let's compile mod2. Okay. okay so now what did we do so now we created multiple modules okay that means 
the parent demo product can have multiple modules wherein we are considering each of the module as a separate project why because internally it has its own pom.xml and it has src so that all the source files related to this will be going inside all the tests related for this component mod one will be present here so that whoever is the developer when you are writing code it will be easy for them to maintain separately okay so now when whoever is the developer who wants to test his component he'll be going here and he'll be testing only his component so that it should be working fine okay so this is how you can have multiple modules it's very simple okay so did you guys get that it looks so simple right yes <laughs> okay so suppose, suppose i have another module mm -hmm. so uh, which will have uh, uh, say 10 jars mm -hmm. so simply i can go and copy a search folder over there and uh, uh, can i build build like this yeah that is reproducibility so all you have to do is like see copy paste rename the folder go to the pom.xml correspondingly you modify whatever you want to put inside it okay i'm just not doing anything just for demo but if you have any specific dependencies or if you have any specific plugins you modify into it and then you go to the src folder here you change all the source code uh, related to only mod 3 that means you remove all the older ones and put only those files specific to mod 3 and once you're done what you can do i can okay i can do a clean then you can just simply run i will clean and then i'll do package so it will first delete all the older files and then it will run a compile do the package once again okay so like this you can create as much as possible now that is the advantage of uh, maven so with just copy pasting and following the same structure you can redo everything easily you're getting it Did you get that? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but again, so if you see, it, it's very simple. I mean, what did I do? Rather than having the pom.xml and the src directory here, I created a couple of directories and we made it as individual components or individual projects. So it's just easy. But now, the question comes what if you have 15 modules like this okay or say 10 modules like this and if you want to compile as a product because when you go as a build engineer you will not be just building one component but you will be building the entire product so for my entire product i need to build 10 jars like this so first question how will you do it will you be going inside one by one and executing the command maven package maven package maven package or whatever you want to do is that one way that you can do but will it be easy to do if you have more and at the same time what if if you have some dependencies which means say that like i said module uh, 2 depends on module 3 so when you are compiling you have to first compile module 3 and then compile module 2 now in those cases how will I remember? So is it that we have to remember everything and we have to give? Now that is one of the problem that will happen in Ant, wherein it doesn't know anything. So you have to instruct to it saying that what is the dependency order, all those things. Whereas if you see in Maven, it has the intelligence of taking care of the dependency management. So if you remember, I said that. So how it is going to do? let's see that and you will see what is the advantage and how simply i mean or how simple is it to do it in maven it's all needed is that you have to understand the structure okay so the first thing what we'll do is before going into the dependency let's see how we can build it as a project so now our requirement is rather than going inside one by one 
I just need to uh, invoke one command for the product and it should build me all the jars which is required for this demo project. So in that case, now how will you act everything? How will you uh, call Maven? And if you remember, if I say some command like this, how does Maven run all these things? It is with respect to a configuration file called pom.xml. Okay, so now in order to execute everything from here, you should have a corresponding pom.xml. Only then it was doing everything. Okay, so what we'll do now is let us create one pom.xml so that that will try to call all this pom.xml's internally and it will work. Okay, so now what I'll do is if you remember, I had opened this in the long time, right? So I've still opened and I've kept it in the editor. So now what I'll do is I'll just share this. Sorry, I'll just save this. So now if you see, you have a pom.xml and it is present in the demo folder. And the next thing. So what happens if I execute uh, Maven from this place? It will try to read a pom.xml and correspondingly to that, it will work based on a SRC folder which is present here. So now, if you see, there is no SRC folder. Why? Because we are not doing any build directly wherein the SRC folder is within this, but you have one pom.xml corresponding to this. Then what is the need of this? So the need of this pom.xml is to go inside each of these directories and call whatever command that you're invoking. So the important thing is this pom.xml is going to act as a parent wherein the pom.xml what you have inside each one of them is going to act as a child pom.xml. So the need is if you want to build, you can directly go inside and build. If not using this pom.xml, I'm going to call each one of them. Okay, now, so if I do that, how it will react? So the first thing here, if you see, in the pom.xml, we have GAD, group ID, artifact ID, and version. GAV is present. Okay, now, along with this, I have told you sometime back, uh, I mean, basically in previous class, about this packaging. So what does it mean by packaging here? And what do you mean by jar here? So compiled the uh, packet. Yeah, so what do you mean by jar here? It means, did we tell? I'm asking, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think I was wrong, yeah. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. What is that? Vinay, you're saying something. I think it is, uh, the uh, POM file is asking, yeah, the POM file is asking Maven to make a jar file out of it. Exactly. So we are not saying anything, right? When I say package, how does it know automatically to create the package? It is based on the reference what I've given here. So if it is a var, because if you remember the first uh, day I said, uh, when you are using the archetype, it will automatically know how to create. That is because in case if you are trying to create a var file, then you've just put it as var automatically it will try to create a var. The end result of your package will be a var file. So you should put what and all is required for the var file in the same structure because right now we are not doing anything. If it is a var file, then you need to follow this structure here because if it is a var, which is nothing but a web application, then you need to have certain configuration files, some web apps folder. So all those things you have to put. Right now it is very simple. Instead of that, you will find some folders here. You will find resources and whatever that you are trying to do. Those kind of things will be there. So only then automatically it will try to take it up. Okay, I am trying to create a what? A var. So now here if you see, if it says packaging is jar, that means this pom.xml is used to create a jar. But if you see now, neither there is any source file nor you will be creating any jar because there is no src folder which correspondingly has all the java files so that means it is not the right convention what we are using right 
because if you have the jar here in the any one of the modules then that means that this pom.xml is used to create a jar but here we are not going to create a jar but you are just trying to call all these modules so the purpose of this is only to call all the internal pom.xml so in that case the first thing what you need to do is you need to change the string to pom okay so if you put pom here it means this pom.xml is a parent.xml and it will not do anything by itself which is it will not do whatever the life cycle of the phase it is it is used only to pass on the information to its child okay so that is what it means okay now the first thing what we have done is we have given the pom.xml and we have told it to be pom packaging which means this is a parent and it has to handle all the modules okay now how does it know what modules it has to handle okay so for that what structure we follow is okay and let me show you the structure first so now if you have a similar example so we have to use a tag called modules and inside that you will specify the all the modules or the components whatever directories you have with respect to each modules directory okay so now we'll do the same thing so inside the parent i will say this much mod 1 mod 2 okay and if you want you can add mod 3 also so now i'll put it like this so what is that we have done what i have done is now i am saying that there is a parent pom or we call it a super pom and this parent pom is used to invoke the pom.xml of all the other modules here okay so now see what happens so where are we we are in the parent project directory okay so to have a better understanding i will delete this okay and now if i invoke maven package see what is it going to do okay so what is that done if you see it is going inside module 1 and module 2 and one by one it is trying to compile and finally it is saying that i am working on a product itself so it goes from all the dependencies inside it so for this module you have module sorry this project you have module 1 and module 2 or two components and since you have specified it here as module 1 module 2 then automatically it goes inside and it will read the pom.xml corresponding to it and it knows what and all you have to execute based on what you have given it will execute suppose if you add one more module it will still work in the same way so if you say this okay and now if you say this see what it does so it i mean it just went fast but it would have gone one by one now what is that you notice here so in which we give it's following the same pattern exactly so it is following the same order what we have given and it is working fine okay so is it clear until now yes okay uh, before i make it complex <laughs> i wanted to show you something else then i'll come to it so at least are we fine now how do you handle as a product here you you write whatever you want in this pom.xml that will make sure how this particular component or module should work wherein you come as a product when you want to invoke this is how you'll be just invoking and that will take care of everything okay so if you have this understanding before proceeding to the next one 
Now what we'll do is we have to understand one more concept called as dependencies. Okay, just like plugins what we saw, we might be having a lot of dependencies, right? So let's first understand dependencies and then come back. So before that, any, any doubt in this? Any doubts? No? Okay. So now I said one more thing and we know for now is that Maven does the dependency management, right? So now let's see as a whole project or as a whole product, how can we do a dependency management? Okay. So now we had module one, module two, module three. Correct. Now I'm saying your module three is dependent on module two. So what does it mean? It means in order to compile module three, I need to have module one iPhone one dot zero snapshot dot jar available. Only then it will come and pick it up. Okay, now the first thing what we need to do is we need to specify the dependencies. So how will you specify the dependencies? So now going back to the question, how will you identify a jar in Maven? It is using the GAV, all right? So no matter plugin, no matter any kind of jar that you use, you always refer to GAV. And that is why I was saying it is very important. So now if you see, we need to know the GAV of your module two so that I can give it as a reference to module three. Okay, so now what is the syntax? It is again an attribute where you have an attribute called dependencies and that will contain all the dependencies which you have. Okay, so now within that each dependency or each jar which is dependent has to be given within the sub tag called dependency. So for now for module 3 we have module 2 as a dependency. So what we'll do is we will create dependencies and dependency inside that you will be putting the GAV of module 2. So like this if you have many dependencies then you just create one more dependency tag and you put the GAV of that particular jar file or plugin. So like that within the dependency tag for each dependency internally sub tag you will be putting the GAV of that specific project or jar file. So now let's go. So what I'll do is now I will copy this GAV and I'll go to this module 3. Okay and now see here we already have a default dependency that is they are saying that there is a jar or this is nothing but a plugin if you are using any j units okay now j unit is a plugin which is used for running unit test suppose if you want to run the unit test specifically using j unit plugin then by default it is saying that you need to use this and that is what is the dependency so in the same way now we are trying to add a dependency of what it is not a plugin but it is a jar file of a different project so simply we'll first add a dependency okay and we give the GAV of that particular Okay, so now I have added the dependency of module 2 in module 3. Okay, so now which means every time when I compile module 3, it will check the presence of this or it will use this module dot uh, module 2 dot jar and try to work on module 3. Okay, but what will happen here? So let me now try to do it manually. So I'll go to module 3 okay and then I'll say maven package okay 
okay so it is giving me an error so do you understand anything by this error it is saying that it could not resolve the dependency for what for this module 3 jar why because it is saying that it could not find the artifact artifact is nothing but a deliverable from a build that is what I told you in the first class right we do different names so it is saying that this artifact or jar is not present and what is that it is module 2 iPhone 1.0 snapshot dot jar so do we have this jar file where do you have this jar file in module 2 yes do we have but it is saying it is not present why is that so we didn't uh, compile the module 2 no yes. we have it we have the jar here it is the same answer what you gave me so where does it uh, module 3 look for all the dependent uh, jars oh in local repository exactly so we didn't do the step called install in this right yeah. did we do that no since we didn't do the install it is still present here so now first thing what you need to do is you have to go to module 2 now run maven install and if you run what it will do it will take the file from this and put into the local repository see it is copying the module dot uh, two jar and it is copying to the local repository okay so now if you go back to module 3 and if you run maven package it will automatically pick up from this local repository and it will consider the compilation and go I'm getting it so this is how you generally define a dependencies of either you can specify a plugin or you can specify a jar it simply put it inside the tag called dependency and give the GAV are you getting it okay uh, yeah uh, to install uh, the jar file into local uh, local repository can't we do it from the uh, major uh, major uh, the uh, main directory like you created a form there right in the main directory module 1 module 2 module 3 in uh, form yeah you can do it i okay. shouldn't come to that level first i am showing you a, okay. uh, uh, you know module level we'll go to that next okay. okay but at least are you clear now how do you put a dependency yes so now every time module 3 wants to run module 2 has to be compiled right okay now going back to the first thing what we did now if you remember what is this this is true I called this directly right the same question what you said now sorry so instead of compiling it it is the same thing so now if I come come outside okay and now if I say maven install what is it going to do it is going to do the same thing inside each of them it will go inside module 1 it will compile create the package after that it will copy this to the local repository then it will once again come here copy it and put it inside the local repository so like that it will do the same thing for all the three modules it is not like only for this you do like that because as a project we are doing it I mean as a product we are doing not as a individual component okay so that is what we can do but it answers your question but my question now is if you see the structure what we have given or the order what we have given is 3 1 2 right that means first compile 2 then compile 1 then compile 2 but now in this case if you are working it will not work why because module 3 is dependent on module 2 so module 2 should be compiled first and then come to module 3 and then module 1 right 
logically before compiling uh, compiling module 3 module 2 should be compiled now in that case this logic will not work then it will be a problem so right now the install is available now take this example i have done changes in all the three now when you run module 3 now it will be picking up which file it will be picking up the module 2.jar which is present in the local repository but that is not the latest one why because i have compiled some files here which means i have modified some files here so i need to compile it again and recreate the jar then i have to do a install so based on that new file module 3 should work so for that module 2 should first work and not module 3 so in that case this order is not the right one yes or no Don't you think it will not work in the same way as we expected when we have dependencies? Isn't it? It, it? It's not the right order, right? Uh, did you guys get my question? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. in those case, what is that we can do? So again, <laughs> to go back so what we can do is if you see we just told only from the parent that all these things are child which means if i put it inside modules it means that this is a parent and all these are child whereas the child doesn't know anything about parent so blindly what it is doing this will just go inside this folder and just calling whatever command you gave but for now what we need to know is it should automatically do the dependency management and how will that happen it will happen only when you have a complete parent and child relation wherein for now only the parent knows about child whereas the child doesn't know anything that is because as soon as this parent pom.xml enters this folder it will just drop the command and it will leave all the execution to this okay so in that way it just doesn't know anything about the order so it is just doing whatever you have told so for that reason we have to establish a complete parent and child relationship so how will you do that is anyway we have told to the parent that these are the child now we have to do something to the child so that it will understand that this is my parent so in order to do that so we have an attribute called parent wherein you simply specify the GAV of your parent so that when you specify it like this, the child will give the complete handle to the parent so that the parent is not just going to drop the command and say that you just run. It will take over all the commands what it has to run. But before that, it will go through the complete project file that is the pom.xml of the child and based on the dependencies what it has to take care it will work okay to to put it simple let's try to do the same so i will create a parent i will close the parent tag now it has to give the gav so the gav is here i'll simply use that okay so now what happens is this parent has a complete control over this pom.xml and i will do the same thing here and i'll do the same thing here so now the parent dot XML or the parent pom.xml has the complete understanding and the relationship. So now see how it behaves. Okay, see. Uh, so now if I just simply say maven install, you see what happened there? What is it doing? So 
So what is the first component that it is building? Model two. Yeah, so two. it completely understands and takes care of all the dependencies, whatever you have to do. So first it will see whether is there a dependency. If it is there, based on that, it will work. So now if someone asks as an interview or a question here is how does Maven does this? One thing is you put up a parent child relationship that is using the modules here and a tag called parent. But internally how it does this, we call it as Maven reactor. Okay, so there is something called as Maven reactor. And if you notice that is the first thing which will be running. So Maven has something called as a reactor which will first go through each and every project. It will decide what are the sources and resources that we need to do, right? The first step of our life cycle, that is Maven's life cycle. Then it will create a build order and it will decide that this is what I have to do first. This is what I have to do next. So once it decides the build order in the reactor, then based on that Maven will go ahead and run whatever steps you have you have specified with each of the component okay so it is through the reactor it does everything internally so Vina, did, did did answer your previous question and did it answer my question Kumar? Yes, I did. Yeah, but the here uh, there is no react. I mean, reactor in the sense is logically treats right. Yes, internally. See uh, how it does. I even we literally don't know. That is only if you go through the code. But I'm saying how it does this. So reactor is the one which decides what is the build order, and how it decides. It internally takes care of the relationship between the parent and child what you have given so who does the build order is reactor does the build order so this POM is related to mod 2 right yes okay. so here we are deciding the parent but, uh, we are not deciding we are just giving the complete control to the parent now what okay, module two as a parent yes so now when the this first form now when you execute this it will not blindly go inside each folder and run it will go inside and it will try to read the form when it is reading it sees the information saying that parent then it will take a control of this form and decide that wait I am not supposed to trigger you first because if I read your form.xml I see that you are saying there is a dependency of this then it will go inside this and it will read this and after reading this okay then there is nothing dependency or whatever I have to do first I'll do it here then I'll come and then go with the order so that is what it does the first thing it does is it goes through each one each and every modules and based on what you have given internally it will decide how the project should be built that is what is the build order and based on that it will be working on it okay. so first it will it will went for mod 2 and then how it is coming from mod 1 is there any again parent would is there yeah see logically it should go one after the other but since yeah. you have specified a dependency where mod 3 is dependent on mod 2 so now before executing mod 3 which one should it execute module 2 right yeah. after module 2 it will execute module 3 then what is it remaining remaining is mod 1 why because you have already executed mod 2 first so it will be executing mod 2 mod 3 and mod 1 so you're saying that it is also following the pattern there in the same way it's checking uh, dependencies before that yes that exactly right because okay. it is not just running it blindly and at the same time it is not going and executing it internally it takes into consideration each and every pom.xml and it first decides what is the build order 
now that is the work of reactor which will decide what is the build order because module 1 is a independent module right because it is not dependent on anything so it can run whenever you want suppose if you have specified any dependency here again based on that it will work so all you have to do is you specify your dependency based on one component and don't worry about what is the order and maven will take care of building your entire project based on dependency but here we remove the dependency tags right where we have it still here so, mm. sorry module 3 here we have this okay okay got it it was mod 3 is dependent on mod 2 getting it or if you want I can do one more thing let me put I'll do one thing now see what is that I'm doing what do you mean by this three is dependent on mod one yeah so what will be the order now Mod 1, mod 3, okay, mod 1 first, then mod, uh, can you show me that form file? Yeah, yeah so, so now, mod 3 is dependent on mod 2, okay, wherein mod 2 is dependent on mod 1. So, it will be building 1, 2, 3 in that order. See, mod 3 is dependent on mod 2, okay, so it will be like this so which means 3 is dependent on 2 so first t sh 3 2 should build and then 3 should build sorry first 2 should build and then 3 should build okay now this is confirmed but now if you go to 2 2 is dependent on 1 once again then before even compiling 2 1 should be compiled so it will start from this and is there anything else left here nothing only 3 modules so it will start with 1 2 3 that is how it will do. So the order will be decided based on the dependencies what you give. You getting it? Hello? Yes. Kumar? Hey Hemant, I'm sorry, you just came a little late. Uh, is it uh, you're getting anything? Hello. Hemant. Okay, <laughs> fine. I mean, maybe you can go through the video so that you will understand the first 10 minutes or if you still have any doubts, let me know. I'll explain it once again. Okay, so, uh, uh, you know, I, that's pretty much, I put it as simple as possible <laughs> in explaining uh, Maven because I can make it a little more complex, but uh, just to put it very simple, that's why I removed all those plugins, whatever we used, because if you run it, it might be, uh, it might be taking little time uh, but uh, you know here it just happened everything in one or two seconds but it is easy for uh, understanding in the initial case but uh, in the practical it will not be running it so simply because you will be having multiple files multiple dependencies so it will take some considerable time but at least for the demo uh, I'm just trying to put it as simple as possible with only that concepts because we already learned plugins so again if you put it inside this it might be confusing that's why you know it looks like uh, it, it ran very fast but it will not be so fast <laughs> okay uh, so is, is that concepts clear uh, with how do I use dependencies 
and how do you work as a parent child as a complete project yes okay so now uh, if you proceed further uh, there are a couple of things how you'll be running uh, maven specifically okay so now uh, that's that's what we need to learn so one thing what you'll be doing is so far uh, we saw only until uh, install so now as part of the life cycle phase we also have one thing called as deployment phase right so that is when uh, you want to deploy something so again so when you say deployment uh, it is not so critical thing or it is not so tough thing what you need to do in maven so now the first thing you need to do is you need to know what is the application server which you are using or which you will use to deploy your artifacts okay now when the question comes you need to find out whether it is a particular application of your interest or whatever is in they are using in the company so corresponding to that there will be a plugin available for each and every application server right so now for a demo i just uh, installed uh, jboss application server and we just use all those things so now our requirement is say that we have one project and now in that project what we want to do is i want to deploy whatever that i am building it here okay so when i am building it here i need to deploy this particular jar to some application server so in that case now let's go back to the initial class where how will i use this i need to use a plugin right i need to use a plugin which is corresponding to a application server so in that case what and all do i need to say the specific thing which i need to say is like you remember now i am not interested in doing everything that is right from the beginning so i will go with the same concept of having the build tag having the plugins and the plugin after that what should i give i should give the gav of that particular plugin what i am going to use right so now this is the gav for using jboss application server okay so now you give the specific details about that and once that is done i'm not given going to give any face or i'm not going to give any goals why because i'm not interested to attach anything related to it so i will execute it only when i want because if i attach it to a face every time you will be deploying it unnecessarily so we don't want to happen or we don't want that to happen so what we'll do is we'll keep it as independent so that how do you invoke we invoke using the short name of the plugin or we will use the standard name which the plugin gives using that we will use so how do you know this what we have to do is if you don't know so just go and say that plugin okay so here if you see it will give you a usage so you can use all the usage and structures will also be there present specifically and based on that how you want to have you can get it so here if you see it is going to be the same where we are not interested to attach it to any particular face let us try doing it separately so that when you are practicing you don't want to mix compiling and do the deployment now when you are trying to run the only difference will be the configuration that's what i said so for the configuration what and all details you need specifically you need little details about where is the application server and how do you connect it what is the username what is the password all those things has to be specified so if you go in the production there will be one system administrator who is maintaining this application server so now when you are trying to run on a specific application server all you need is that details that is where is the application server how do you connect to it what is the username and password where exactly you have to deploy 
okay so those informations are what you need to specify but other than that you go with the default structure and it will be the same to everything okay so now in that you have default goals which is used for each and every task for example i can use the same configuration same plugin to deploy a jar okay and i can use the same plugin to undeploy a jar if i want i can start this server and stop this service all those things i can do so for that you don't have any specific options how is it possible it is because if you see maven gives different goals so when you call this particular plugin name colon goal then automatically it knows that okay deploy is the goal for this goal what i have to do i have to do some deployment okay so you have some standard examples for each and everything so for now you don't have to worry about going in deep so if i say deploy it automatically understands that i have to do a deploy if i say undeploy it knows that i have to do undeploy that is why i am not going to write any specific goals so that we will use the default goal which is given by the maven for this particular plugin so you can get all the list of plugins whatever that you want to work specifically on a plugin here okay so now for this specific application server if you see what and all is required for the configuration first i need to tell where is that installation that i have done which means jboss home is nothing but the place where i have installed this application server okay then second thing is you need to say what exactly you are trying to put into this deployment so now let's take this i'll go here i'll create this and okay now i will change this gav to this particular one okay i'll simply take this and i'll put and i don't even have to give the name i'll just say so here i'm saying i have to use this plugin and you have to deploy it at this particular place okay so now let me quickly start So what I'll do is, okay, I'm, I'm just trying to start my application server, which is present in this place. Okay, let me try going to this. Okay. So I have some deployments which I've already done. Okay, so I'm just running it. So quickly, what we'll do now is, so I have added this deployment plugin that is to use the JBoss application plugin, wherein specifically access this installation of JBoss. Okay, now if we go to the command prompt, okay, let me go to mod one, because this is what I have specified here. Okay, so now here, if I have to run, I need to run this specifically this command so only then it will be invoking this particular plugin
okay so now if you see it is in automatically invoking a deployment step wherein when do you deploy you will deploy after the install phase right where for deployment logically you have to create the package so before the package you have to compile before the compile you have to generate the resource so that is why it is going through all the steps from the beginning and once it is done it has deployed so now how do you see whether it has deployed or not logically you go here and you see here it has deployed to this particular place okay so like this using this particular plugin you can deploy or undeploy now using the same plugin what we have used here okay using the same configuration details what i have given all i'm going to say is undeploy now as soon as i call this goal automatically it knows that what it has to remove it is the gab what we have specified right so it knows that undeploy means what you have to undeploy this particular GAV whatever you have specified has to be undeployed from this place you see it has remote so this is what you will be doing in production wherein they will be specifying you a particular application server and in that application server all you need is you have to get the details corresponding to what is the configuration that is needed logically you might be using different uh, if you're using tomcat you might not be using jboss home it might be something else or if you're using websphere that might be different if you're using glassfish only the values of the configuration with respect to that particular plugin will be changing wherein internally if you see for accessing application server what and all do you need you need for certain details like where is it installed what is the username password what exactly you want to access all those details did you get that yes well i got a doubt yeah. might be a little bit high uh, but if if i need to uh, uh, you know deploy only a specific jar then where can i specify that this is what we did only this jar right now we okay if if okay uh, for uh, for instance like if if i'm giving this this uh, plugin in uh, the demo uh, project pom uh, file uh -huh. so i just want to deploy the mod one uh -huh. so can i do it from uh, there itself which one uh, like the demo the main project the main pom is there right the parent uh -huh. pom yeah so logically you will not be doing uh, jar by jar Okay. okay if you see what we did is jar okay let me tell you the difference so what do you guys yeah, understand i don't have any idea regarding the difference no no the job let me tell you what is the difference so what is the difference between jar and var that is what you need to know and what is ear kumar do you know any difference or what do you think what is jar what is var Specifically, jar is nothing but you know, it's a Java or whatever it is in the local that we work. When we are deploying that into the web application server, like Tomcat and some other web servers, we will go for a var, I guess. Hmm. Yes, but what exactly is the difference? Web applications means you have uh, web uh, HTML pages and all, and Java is all all about Java Java pages. <laughs> <laughs> no. So okay. First of all. a deliverable in java should be some archive okay archive means all the class files whatever you have written or whatever you have got basically will be working because all those things whatever you are seeing now right it has been executed through some class files so you cannot directly run a class file because there might be dependencies of one class with other class file so what we do is we link everything together or we archive it together called as a java archive file okay and that is what a very simple file is called as jar so jar is nothing but a group of class files which is used to perform one single action so that if one class file is dependent on other class file all the class files are present at the same file so if you want to perform a action you just 
group certain class files and put into a archive called as what jar file that is what build is all about right if you see the build is all about compiling and link linking or assembly that is what you're doing as a simple jar file but now it is not always that you will be doing one functionality separately like here for connecting to jboss i needed one jar for doing my compilation i need one jar okay so in that case you will be having separate jar but when you're giving as an application how will you give will you give like 10 separate jars and every time when someone has to invoke he has to invoke one separate jar no there should be again one point of contact which might in internally invoke different jars right that is how it should be so in that case how will you do is so the same thing is whenever you are trying to work as a application that is what kind of application it is a web application then instead of putting everything into jar you will combine multiple jars internally and additionally you will put some xml files that will tell exactly what and all your web application requires okay and that kind of archive is called as var even a var will contain class files or it will contain a combination of jars in addition it will contain certain files specific to your application so that your var doesn't just represent one functionality but it represents a complete application that is what we call it as var okay now when the same thing when you take it as an enterprise one wherein you have to do some kind of licensing then you do some more additional files and you create something called as ear so now if the question goes back to what you asked do you want to deploy jar by jar no you will be creating a var and based on that var finally you will be deploying that so that is why we create only on a particular component or a final component which will create the exact uh, var or jar whatever you want to create and then you specify the deploy only to that are you understanding the difference between jar and var now yes kumar yes Hemant, <laughs> I'm not seeing any answer from Hemant. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So this pretty much we are done. The the few things which I need to know, but it's not so mandatory. So now uh, we were working on. Uh, SEM related activities, right? Suppose now whatever this directory that you have obtained, now assume that it is obtained from the central repository like Git. Okay, now what will you do for that? Now you have worked. Now what if there is a new file which someone else has modified and you want to take that file and update? Then what will you do? Logically, this would have been a your Git local repository wherein you created this repository from a central repository now if you want to update some file inside this what will you do it goes back to the git question did you understand my question no so practically in the production or when you're working in a company how will you get this okay now who will be writing all these files who will be writing on the structure the developer will be doing it right yeah now where will be the repository be stored it will be stored in the central repository, central repository yeah. okay now when you want to work what will you do you have to create a clone or you have to create a copy of the central repository and work in your local repository right yeah okay now my question what I'm saying is say that you are working on some files you have did some compilation and built is fine now a developer does a new check-in okay 
so assume that a developer has modified one of the component or he has modified a java file inside a module now how will you update your workspace with the file that he has put in the central repository git pull exactly man that is the answer so you will do a git pull only then your current workspace will be up to date with the central repository if you put it in a common term you should say that you have to do some kind of update in the repository with your local workspace so that whatever is the latest change you will get in work right now one of the way what you can do is you can manually run the command called git update here sorry uh, git pull here right so instead of doing it in maven there are certain plugins through which you can connect directly to the git repository or whatever repository that you are working suppose if a developer doesn't know all this kind of commands what you can do is you can simply write using a plugin which is available for scm and using that plugin if you specific if you specify the particular uh, goal name it will take the corresponding action so that if you might use uh, git you might use subversion or you might use perforce so wherein a developer doesn't have to know the exact command for each and everything so what you can simply do is you can write a plugin like this and you can give it to him so that if you just tell him whenever you want to update a file you do this so internally if you see if it is git it will be doing git pull if it is uh, svn uh, that will might might do a git checkout internally or whatever command is related to that particular tool so this is one way what uh, you can uh, give it to the user and ask them to work but it is not the right way to use or i will say it is not the right it is not the best way to do because that is why we need jenkins especially so if you remember in the continuous integration we had the same scenario that is now whenever a developer checks in a code what is that i wanted to do we wanted to update the workspace and do the build based on the latest change Continue. wherein what did jenkins do it itself created one repository and automatically when a new check in is happened it was doing a update right so in literally we did the same thing there also we used the maven project but we didn't write anything like this we just said maven package wherein jenkins automatically took care about updating the repository now that is what you will be practically doing in the production when you are using jenkins if you are not using jenkins then you have to go with doing all those things here instead of that what you can simply do is use jenkins that will take care of whatever activity especially from adding up the activity that it can do but just for uh, interview point of uh, question someone ask you just need to know yeah just like any other uh, plugin we also have a tag called scm specifically which internally is going to invoke a plugin now this tag is a common tag okay so no matter what tool you use you use git you use perforce you use subversion the same details will be there that is you need to give the url where you can access and you need to give the connection string that will tell what is the username password if you want to give and finally you will be saying how you have to connect or where exactly the repository is so those are the details what you need to specify for each one of them okay so it is not like it is deprecated depreciated the only thing is the usage in the practical is not so big no one actually uses but just because you have to know i'm just uh, telling you but uh, once this is done i'll once again go through that continuous integration uh, what i was telling to you so that uh, you can get a complete uh, idea about that okay